Welcome to chapter six notes. Uh, we're looking at investigating and modeling time series. So time series is when we're looking at um, data that goes over a set of time. It could be years, days, months, um, decades, seasons, that kind of stuff. So we're looking at looking for trends. We're looking at um, bits of information that kind of re repeat so we can um, take out information from that data. Page 195 to 199 is the types of trends on your textbook. However, if we look at the bottom of these notes, so we go all the way to the end, um, I've placed here examples of the, these trends. So um, here's all the information types of trends. Have a look. If you've got any information, um, there any questions, you can ask me for further information of these types of trends. So it's a breakdown at the end. Um, a piece of information is that all trends are random. So that's one of the things that we, need, we look at. There's all different types of information. Is this trend um, irregular, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, one of the things is that all trends, um, all plots are random. We can plot time series on our calculator by changing the scatter plot to the x y line. So we have our data here on this graph button. Instead of scatter, we have x y line. So this joins all our dots together in a line, so you're able to see trends and information. Uh, moving means. So moving means we use this to emphasize any trends in the data by eliminating noisy, jagged components. So we're trying to take away all those really pointy parts of the information. They may ask you for uh, three moving mean, five moving mean, etc. So however many data points they're asking for, for example, three, you um, take the average or the mean of those three data points. If it's for five, we take five data points. And you keep moving along the line um, in every five points. So the next one, for example, this would be y2, y3, y4, and then so on, until you've got all your data points. Um, here's an example of um, how you would show your uh, moving mean with centering. So we, if we're doing a two moving mean, we take the average of two points. And you're going to have to show this, um, that this data point falls in between these two. So if you're drawing up yourself a table, the two moving mean falls actually in between Y1 and Y2 here. So the same with Y2 and Y3, if we found the average of those, it falls in between. So just be careful when you're, you're drawing that up if you're doing it in a table. If we want to center these points, we then take the average again of these values. So uh, we've got our average of y1 and y2 and y2 and y3. We take the average of these two values um, to center it. So if you look here, we had our values that fell between these, these values here, the answers fell between. But when we take the centering, it falls back in line with one of the values. So this is a very, very important part of information that when you are actually having to plot the two moving mean or four moving mean with centering on a graph is the assessors will be looking at where you actually start your data point. So for example, this one here will actually start in line with Y2. So be very careful. I'm going to go through a few more examples um, in the revision weeks back at school to help you with this. But just to recap, if we've got a two moving mean, it falls in between the two. Then when we center it, we take two values, it actually falls back in line. If you want to have a look at the textbook, we have on page uh, 208, here's an example again, how it falls in between. And then if we take the centering, it falls back in line with one of the points. And on your x-axis, say Tuesday would be on the x-axis, That's has, that data point has to be in line with your x-axis. The assessors will be looking at that. Uh, when we were in class, if we go all the way to the end of our notes, I did go through with you um, some examples of two moving means, four moving means um, with centering and three and five moving means. They only center when there's even value of moving means. So for example, two and four will be centered, uh, three and five won't be. So have a look at these notes because uh, you should have filled these in. If not, um, ask me in revision week and I can go through that with you. Okay, let's have a look at uh, moving medians. So remember, median is the middle value, and when we calculate medians, they must be in size um, in size order. So if we're doing a three moving median, here's an example, 12, 10, 14, there's our data points. 
put them in line uh, in size order, then find the middle. So 12 would be this here. Five moving means, we have our five data points. Place them in value uh, size order, then find the middle. Now, when we're doing this graphically, so let's have a look at a graph um, from our textbook. Uh, this example is located on page 212 of your textbook. Uh, here's our data points here on our graph. When we're finding, if we're going to find, say, for example, in this case, there's three data points. It's asking us to find the three moving median. What you need to do is you need to find the median of your x values and then the median of your y values. So, for example, here's our data values here. Let's do our x first. In size order, this value here is 1, this value here is 3, and this value here is 4. On your x values, these are actually in size order already. So the median would be the middle of these three values, so 1, 3, and 4. The median would be 3, so we can draw a vertical line through the x axis of that value. Now let's do our, our median of our y values. So our y values here is 1, 3, and 4 again. So we need them to be in size order. So the middle of that would be three. We draw a line through there. Where these two lines intersect, we put a cross. Now, if we have a look, and that's, and then we would move over one step, and then you would do the next three points. So let's have a look um, at another example in the textbook. Here's all our data points. One, we do our x value, and our, we do our y value, and we put our dot. And then we keep moving over one set. So we do one, two, three, that would be that one. We do one, two, three, then we put there. And we work our way all the way across the graph. Be very, very careful um, when you're looking at these. So if we did this value, this value, and that value there, in size order on the X, would go one, two, three, that's our middle here. But if we're doing our Y, the size order goes this bottom one first, then that middle one, then that top one. So because we've gone one, two, three, we draw the line through this one for a three moving median. And that's why our point is there. So be very careful, it's generally on the Y axis, be very, very careful that you are um, taking them in size order. So sometimes you might go uh, this value, then that value, then that value. So you work. it's not always in straight line. So let's have a look now at seasonal indices. So whenever we have data, it may be, um, for example, seasons could be how much rain there is across the year. It, the data is very dependent on what season it, it actually is. So what we can do is we can de-seasonalize our data before we do any further analysis of um, the information that's provided. So we get given, um, we can calculate seasonal indexes or seasonal index indexes will be given to us. So we can calculate a seasonal index by total value um, for, of all the datas and then divide it by a season average. We can then de-seasonalize our data by having um, our actual figure and we can divide it by our seasonal index. If we are predicting using de-seasonalized data, we need to make sure that we then turn it seasonal again. So if we've got de-seasonalized data, if you're making predictions, Predictions, you've then got to re-seasonalize it. And we can use the linear regression um, line to, to calculate um, our line of best fit or the, for our data. Um, changing your X values. You may need to change your um, X values to find uh, your linear regression line. Um, for example, if you use a 1981, 1982, 1983, you can then change those to be one, two, and three. That allows you then to find a Y intercept on your axis, then to work out a formula. Just make sure that when you are going back um, and you are do, then doing your predictions later on, that if you're, say, you calculate your X value and it comes out to be three, you need to then work out what does three mean. It means 1983. So you do quite often need to change um, your axis values. So instead of years, you can then use um, values. Now, going back to seasonal indexes, um, all your seasonal ind indexes add up to how many there are. So as we can see in this example, we've got three seasonal indexes. These need to add up to three. So if we add up those three values, they do add up to three. So your total seasonal indexes add up to how many seasonal indexes you have. Months of the year, we've got 12. 
if you add up all your seasonal indexes, they, they equal 12. Um, calculating data average, we can calculate the data average by total value for a season divided by a seasonal index. Then we can use this to calculate further seasonal index values. I'm going to do um, in revision week a couple more examples of seasonal indexes, but I really recommend you read from page 217 in your textbook um, and go back and do quite a few worked examples from there. Have a look at the um, core SAC. Um, go through that. There was a couple of questions in the core SAC um, that were definitely using seasonal indexes. Um, thank you.